Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check it out. We sat down with Molly Elmore for an incredible conversation about Ripple and XRP and all things around it. And I tell you, it was a great conversation. And over the next few days, we're going to be releasing that in segments so you can see that conversation take place. I want to shout out Molly Elmore for an incredible conversation and all she does for the community and the Digital Perspective uh, Mastermind Group, where she is a big part of there as well. So shout out to her. But before we do, I want you to know that we're going to discuss some of these topics where we, you know, uh, the SEC sees fighting for XRP to be a security. Full disclosure, I say it in a video here, but I want to remind people, I personally believe XRP is a currency. So when you hear us discussing this, we're really trying to discuss it with an open mind about how the SEC is fighting to see XRP as an asset, as a security, and not our own personal opinion. So that's really what some of this conversation is about today. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it gives you some you know, real thought exercise to really go over some things. If you have any great points to add, please put them underneath the video. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Somebody roll that beautiful in. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. If you haven't checked them out, it's my sponsor, Glint. I was a customer first. Gold is security. Glint, it's key. And it's no joke. It really is gold's key. There's no question about it. If you don't believe me, click the link underneath the video. Try it out for yourself. You won't stop once you start. It's a beautiful thing. Take control of your finances and do it with God's money. It's gold. You can do it right there. We help Let Glint help you. All right, let's get started with this. It's going to be a great conversation, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Molly Elmore. Here we go. Enjoy. Second, you know, one of the other things is, is that, you know, when on the channel, I've had to entertain the notion because of the lawsuit that, you know, XRP is or isn't a security. And personally, myself, I see it as a currency. I always have. But because I'm an investor and I'm not afraid to look at the bad, good outcomes of something, you know, I'm forced to, you know, try to be as objective as I possibly can. Right. And, you know, if it were to have a bond designation, because we know it's not a share because there are ripple shares to the company. Right. So but right. companies all the time will create bonds to do expansions to their company. So if the SEC were to win on something like that issue, then I could see that if that were to be the case or something close to it, then I could see countries and central banks holding this bond in a liquidity pool. And I could eventually someday see a stable coin being issued off of that pool and off of that uh, bond, should it go that way. And then you have a stable value coin or stable coin, however you want to call it, or global stable coin that could be price set. Right. Because I ultimately believe that the price has to be set if it's going to make its final destination to serve as a bridge currency to the world. And the reason I believe that is because if you don't have an absolute price, then why would the banks use it? I could just continue using gold that fluctuates every day or I could continue using the U.S. dollar that fluctuates every day. The liquidity is there. I can make so it. So would happen. they would you peg it, which means you want the value to be tied to another asset like gold. Maybe you could peg it to gold, but that does mean that somebody has to defend that peg. Well, I'll tell you what the peg is. Again, the XRP ledger is the decentralized exchange with all the liquidity of all the exchanges of okay. the world. That's a formulated price. Now, let's say that that price formulated comes to one, two, three, four, five, right? You know what I mean? Well, I could choose to just keep it at one, two at a stable price. Right. While it floats at one, two, three, four, five on the back end, but it'll never be guaranteed any less than one, two. Right. So because it won't go to one, two, three, four, five, because three, four, five is the collateral headroom on the backside that it could never hit a dry pocket. That price is always guaranteed. And no matter what fluctuates, if you get enough water in the pool, the water will only move this much. Right. You know what I mean? So if who if guarantees I, that price, though, I don't get who that who does. Well, that. it's a decentralized exchange. Everyone who uses the exchange is going to have to put up collateral. So let's look at the FX market. Right. Okay. So 
XRP is perfect bridge for FX, all the FX currencies of the world. Now, currently, right now, you don't need it to be the, the bridge between the euro and the dollar because there's enough liquidity between those two currencies, but it works really well in lower corridors and more exotic corridors, right? So as you're building the currency, what if the central banks, when they launch their CBDC, say, hey, you know what? We're going to plug into our private version of the XRP ledger, which means for our digital CBDs wholesale to work back end, banks don't trust each other. We have to put up a certain amount of physical cash, a certain amount of physical gold that never leaves to represent that digital value of that central bank digital currency. Guarantee, guarantee that value. That's of that what the BRICS things are. They all have their pile of assets that they're using to back the currency. That's 100% what I believe we're watching happen with the disassembling of the petrodollar and the birth of the XRP ledger's utility using XRP as the new commodity of the world being the water and liquidity of the world. That's what I believe we're watching happen. And that's where you would get a stable price from, is that collateralization of these private ledgers that would all plug in and work to one another on the back end. This way, you're guaranteed a stable price. And then off of that collateralized backed CBDCs, because that's where you would have the CBDCs agree to go back behind gold or other assets, right, to give the confidence to this new digital system. You would have this new confidence brought to the system because gold is God's money, right? So, you know, that's how you're going to have that whole thing where you understand it's like, okay, we can use this then. I can clearly see from the ledger here on the private ledger that we're all using in the G7, G20, because those are the largest economies of the world. Those are ones that really count. And I think when they roll their CBDCs out, they do it back to back. I don't think they do it like, well, one did it this year and one will do it two years from now. I think when they do it, they're going to have to do it pretty much back to back because there's that wholesale connection back in, right? That's what's really going to matter. So I think in order to do that, you collateralize it. The confidence is there. Because if not, you're just talking about, hey, take my CBDC. It's digital code. It's just <laughs> poker chips. Poker chips. Another bank, that's the whole reason to have a bridge currency. Because banks know they don't trust each other. As much as they don't want to give up king of the mountain for all the fees that they make on the friction of the system, they know ultimately there's going to be a day of reckoning coming. And it may come this year. It may come next year. Who knows when it comes. But they're going to be forced to move to this new model in order to bring confidence back to one another in the wholesale back end of this system. And the only way to do it, and you're going to use a digital CBDC, is to collateralize it with real physical assets. And that's the first step of moving from a debt-based system in the world to a asset-backed system in the world. We hear the IMF and the World Bank talk about all so much. So in this whole, I'm, I'm loving this like casino analogy I can because I can visualize it. It's wonderful. What is PolySign in the casino analogy? I think PolySign in the back end is dealing with tokenizing the liquidity providers, right? And tokenizing okay. the, the liquidity providers and the people that have things they need to settle every day. So it's the entire capital markets. It's everybody that needs to settle stocks and bonds, but they want to do it more efficiently. They want T plus zero and they want absolute custody. Well... They can do it at poly signs the way I understand it. If I've got that understanding right, you know what I mean? Then to me, it sounds like a newer, more efficient version of the DTCC. Or maybe it works in tandem, like in the front face, and it converts everybody as it goes through. Then it goes to the DTCC, which would make a lot of sense to me too. It's like the first, that last stop before going to the new digitized side of the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation. You got to get the poker chips. If you're going right. to get into casino, you got to go to the cashier and get the poker chips. And in order to do that, you got to tokenize the capital market and get your poker chips. And then you can go into casino and do what you need to. And if I decide I'm playing against you at a roulette wheel and I win, I don't want your poker chips. That's They're right. useless to me. So I need to get your poker chips and immediately convert them into my poker chips. And then I, I go to PolySign to cash out to leave the casino. 100%, that's how I see it. Yeah. 
or to custody him there until you or to yeah because I, I did really well at the casino so i don't want to get robbed on the way home so i'm going to keep them in my vault at polysign because i'll need to come back tomorrow to play and then someone else is going to go tomorrow and they're not going to have a lot of money so they could borrow my stash i could rent it to you which is kind of like a bond alone and I, you, I will charge you a fee because I'm smart. I bought a whole lot of these poker chips. Now I can actually get passive income or income from my stash of poker chips sitting in the PolySign vault. Absolutely. Or there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to stop it right there. Again, for clarity, when we have this conversation about a bond, I see XRP as money, but I also see the SEC in this case doing what they can to have jurisdiction over the asset because I believe they understand the very, very, very real use case of this asset. And there's nobody that understands it any better than all of us than Goldman Gensler. I've played the clip many times when he was the professor at MIT explaining exactly how XRP was a bridge currency and what the role of it is and how it is to work in the world. I can only hope that he doesn't get his way and that XRP is found to be a virtual currency and allowed to move forward into the use and adoption, not only around the other side of the world as it is now, but certainly here in the United States as well. I believe it is key in order for the United States to remain a innovation leader in the fourth industrial revolution that is the internet of value. Not financial for me or anyone else. It's just our digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you 